Bionox is motivating wellness. Hello and welcome to this edition of Motivating Wellness with Dr. J. Uh, we're always looking for like-minded individuals, people that are in their own right or helping to motivate wellness themselves and, and within their sphere of influence. And that's certainly true of my next guest. This is a Dr. Adam Boonder of the Regenerative Treatment Center. Uh, I'll just read a little bit of his bio. He's uh, prominent in the Kansas City's health and wellness community. He's a pioneer in the progression of regenerative medicine, which we're going to learn what that's all about. He is a former college athlete turned personal trainer. We'll definitely want to hear that story, who has always had a passion to bring health and life to those around him. Dr. Adam is from Iowa. He received his undergraduate from Mid-America Nazarene University and his doctorate at Cleveland Chiropractic College, Kansas City, where he graduated with honors in 2008. So uh, Dr. Boonder, so nice to have you with us today. Nice to be here. Thank you. You got it. So um, let's talk about regenerative medicine. You mentioned uh, you're, you're um, a chiropractor by training and by trade. Um, we know what that's uh, about, you know, adjusting spines and be able to uh, get the nerve flow in, in proper order. But I have a feeling that regenerative medicine is more than just chiropractic. So why don't we start with that? Tell us what that term regenerative medicine means. Yeah, I mean, honestly, you, you can look at the term regenerative medicine and, and you could ask, I kind of joke, it's like potato, potato. I mean, you could go across the board and people could say a whole bunch of different things. You know, when, when we developed our clinic specifically, and, and we actually called our clinic regenerative treatment centers, it wasn't about you know, one specific thing. It was about what modalities, what treatments, what procedures and processes that we could actually put together that would help to restore, repair, and rebuild the body from the inside out. And so that's really what regenerative medicine is. It's a branch of medicine that, again, it looks at the body in a whole different aspect that obviously we are self-regulating, self-healing individuals. How do we remove the interference to allow that process to work? And it, it when we opened up the clinic, it fit really so well um, with my own philosophy of, of chiropractic. You know, it's again, remove the interference of the nervous system and allow that flow to get there, which then re-regulates how the body does its own thing. And that's ultimately what regenerative medicine is to me, how we've built our practice and how we actually focus on regenerative therapies here at our clinic is not that we're doing something to honestly, really create change in a body. It's we're actually removing something, you know, Dr. Chestnut, I don't know if you ever heard of, of Dr. Chestnut. He always talked about rocks in the backpack. He's like, you know, and you're floating down the river, you got these rocks in the backpack. You know, it's not about putting more stuff on you to try to get rid of <laughs> that weight. It's how do we begin to remove? And, and once we can remove these things, then there's room for that change. And, and ultimately that's what regenerative medicine has really become uh, for myself, for our clinic and for our mission. Good. Uh, we appreciate that. We're going to maybe get a few more details of some of the things that you offer within your clinic and things like that. And we'd love to, to hear about uh, your expertise and these different uh, modalities that you have there. Um, you know, as, as many of us enter the field of holistic medicine, we do so because it's personal, right? There's usually, it, it's not like a, a you know, I'm not going to say a typical medical doctor, but, you know, a lot of times they're kind of groomed to become medical doctors or they have that aspiration, um, not because they necessarily had some great experience with it. But uh, within our field, it's, it's usually there's a backstory. And so we'd love to hear a little bit about that, your past things that you're doing now that's uh, shaping what you're doing professionally. Yeah, I, uh, you know, <laughs> even just to become a doc. I wanted to be a doctor since I was in third grade. I, I broke my leg playing football on a playground. My uncle was an orthopedic surgeon. Um, he put my leg basically back together. Uh, it wasn't anything. It was a compound fracture, but he, I remember sitting in his office and he, he's like, okay, this is going to hurt. I'm going to have to move this to set it in place. <laughs> like, okay. You know, and, and he did, and it was excruciating. But the thing that I remember at that moment was the comfort that he made me feel when he was actually helping me. 
And it was from that moment, I'm like, that's what I want to do. I want to be able to, to bring that to people. And so, you know, I, I went through college. I, I became a chiropractor in 2008, uh, practiced for 10 years, uh, loved what I did uh, because I was helping people on, on their healing journey, you know, their wellness journey, their health journey. And um, it was in, oh boy, 2015, a little bit before that, my wife, myself, and my oldest son were all diagnosed with Lyme disease. It was first my son, my, my oldest, and we didn't know why he was, was suffering. He was going through bouts of diarrhea and vomiting, sickness and health, and it literally was going three, two weeks at a time. Um, we all got tested. We were all diagnosed with Lyme disease. My wife um, was actually, um, we had just given birth to our daughter, and um, my son and I actually went on the, the typical antibiotic route um, of treatment. <clears throat> we started to get better. We were doing well. My wife wasn't doing anything because she was actually breastfeeding my daughter at the time, and we didn't want to compromise anything there. Um, fast forward, uh, we end up having surprise number three, Tristan, uh, <laughs> who was then born. And three months after he was born, uh, we were just walking down the hallway, actually getting ready to leave for a family vacation to Florida. My uh, collapses to the floor. And I, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what it was. I, my first thought was, okay, I'm just going to take her to the doctor that, that diagnosed with Lyme. We're going to see what's going on. I didn't realize Lyme could uh, really take you that far down the, the rabbit hole of disability. So I picked her up and we went in and he's like, all right, we're going to start giving her these shots, you know, twice a week. It was a really strong antibiotic and he goes, she should start getting better in a few weeks. And I'm like, okay, you know, th thank God we've got an answer. Um, after about the second or third shot, she started having seizures every day. And, um, I'm calling, I'm saying, wait, th this is going the opposite direction. Um, and he's like, just give it some time. Well, that time lasted about two and a half years. Um, she was bedridden, having seizures daily, being in coma like states. And, you know, the, the mentality of me as, you know, chiropractor or holistic healing, you know, what are the things that we can do naturally? And then all I'm reading about is there's no natural remedy for Lyme disease. You have to hit it with antibiotics. And, you know, she was on over a hundred pills a day, a mixture of antibiotics, medications, anti-malarial drugs, supplements. Our room was literally a dark cave because light would put her into a seizure, sound would put her into a seizure. And, and it was just, our, our world was turned upside down. And I just began searching and researching and trying to find something that, that could help us. And after about a year and a half of the, the traditional medical route, uh, we decided to stop cold turkey on all antibiotics. I mean, she had a port in, she had everything. I mean, it was multiple antibiotics a day. And we left, we went to a, a healing center in Wichita uh, which did some phenomenal things. I mean, she went from wheelchair to being able to up and walk in about two weeks. And we ended up going back and forth through there about uh, eight times. And after that, ended up back where we were before. You know, we're like, oh, this is the answer. And then this is the answer. And we had truly, you know, it, it's the typical story that you hear from a lot of people with Lyme disease. It's the new hope and then it's crushed. And <laughs> it's like, what's the next thing? And, and a lot of it we went into blindly, you know, it's like, we're hoping that this is the next thing. Um, and through that, um, I started researching regenerative therapies. You know, I started researching uh, mesenchymal stem cells, medicinal signaling cells, growth factors, peptides, all these things that, that you could utilize to help restore the body, help to repair the damage. And, um, and so we did that. And in fact, in, it was 2017, was that 2017, 2018? Time flies by way too fast now that it's 2021. Uh, we ended up doing some therapies on her and within a month she was rollerblading down the hill with our kids. You know, my son, you know, raised his arms up, you know, just screaming, yay, look at mom. And oh. it was just that moment, you know, that, that hit, I was like, other people need this. There's, we have to figure out a way that we can offer this hope in, in these therapies to other people. Um, so I left my practice. Uh, again, I had a very successful practice um, helping hundreds of people a week and, um, and decided to actually go out and start speaking on these therapies, uh, helping other practices implement the, the modalities and the treatments. Um, and then in 2019, we actually opened up our clinic. So a year before COVID hit, um, we opened up our doors. Obviously, we didn't know anything like that was going to happen. Um, but, but God, you know, navigated us through all that. And we're still here. And 
Um, through all of this transition, we were able to come across an amazing uh, nurse practitioner that helps us with our modalities. Uh, Summer uh, Wanger is our uh, clinic director. She actually managed and ran a uh, naturopaths uh, clinic for four years. And she is the first one that actually introduced me to your products. And the moment they came into our clinic, it was a game changer. Uh, they, they've been amazing and incredible. So um, a little segue and transition, but that is really how we came to be, you know, utilizing uh, medicinal signaling cells. We use um, other products within our clinic as well that have been uh, life-changing for people. So we talk about things like uh, Wharton's jelly, uh, Wharton's jelly derived uh, uh, signaling cells. And those are all the different things uh, based on regulation, what the FDA says we can and cannot say, we have to obviously be, uh, be obviously weary of, <laughs> of, of the wording and, and the things that we do say, but I can tell you, it's, it's amazing to see how we, we treat, you know, for tissue support and, and helping the body to, again, restore, repair, and even rebuild what damage has happened over the years for many, many people. Very so, cool. Yeah. yeah. Appreciate, appreciate you sharing that story. You know, I think the, the lesson there is don't give up for one. Yeah. Um, oftentimes people do, they, um, they just go one time or they go down one pathway. And if that doesn't work, then that's it. They kind of succumb to their, yep. whatever it is that they're dealing with. And, uh, and that uh, we're really dealers in hope, aren't we? We, we that's are. the first, we, that's the first thing we need to make sure that we're instilling hope in the people that uh, we contact. So kudos to you. I'm so happy to hear the outcome because that is a tremendously challenging issue, but, uh, so wonderful to hear that, uh, you and your family have gotten through it and now you're helping others. So tell us a little bit about uh, what an office visit would look like. What kind of people, obviously, I'm assuming you, you get uh, your fair share of Lyme individuals, but uh, outside of that, you know, who are some of the people that would come in there? What does it look like when they come in there? Yeah. So, um, you know, I guess from the start, the moment somebody walks through the door, uh, we actually come around the front desk. We welcome people in our office. We, we offer them, uh, everything from, from coffee to water, actually to, um, <laughs> and, and I, this not a shameless plug, but we actually mm -hmm. offer a glass of this, nice. uh, we know the benefits. Um, and, and so they walk in after we welcome them to the clinic, uh, they, they fill out their paperwork. I give them a tour uh, of the clinic. I, I want people to feel welcome. You know, our, our office, you can see, I mean, behind me is actually a giant couch. So when you walk in, it, it literally looks like a living room. Nice. Uh, we want it to look like a typical medical office. And, and so I give them a tour. Uh, I just, I always think when people are walking into a new place, the more acclimated they are, the more they're going to feel. Um, and so I share with them uh, and show them all the different uh, treatment rooms. We have an IV lounge uh, for all of our vitamin IV therapies. Um, I show them our processing room, our lab, um, where we draw blood, you know, our vent hood, all the different things that, if they were to move forward with any type of care, they, they kind of know, oh, that's, that's what makes the PRP. Oh, that's, that's where we get, you know, the, the, the product that they're going to be using. I mean, that's where they do the PEMF mat and the shockwave. And so they get to really kind of see everything. And, um, and sometimes I'll pull out the shockwave device, say, here, this is what it feels like, you know? So it's just being able to, to make them feel comfortable and, and make them feel welcome. That's great. You know, that's got to be a different experience uh, for many people. <laughs> yeah, it is. What the... like, oh, wow. <laughs> you know, most people go into the doctor's office and they're they're put into a room and say, oh, just wait. And an hour later, somebody walks in. You know, that's definitely not what we want to <laughs> what we want to be yeah. offering. Very good. That's cool. So um, maybe you have a, a favorite therapy. I know they're, they're all important. And, and is there one in particular that um, you've just sort of been enamored with or or something like that? Yeah. Uh, you know, honestly, it's, it is, it's the, it's the, the Wharton's jelly, you know, derived growth factors. It, it contains basically growth factors, hyaluronic acid, medicinal signaling cells. I mean, that's where we really have seen transformation with people. A lot of what we treat are osteoarthritic patients, um, that are dealing, dealing with, again, osteoarthritis, different grades, uh, from labral tears, meniscal injuries, but to be able to see besides obviously my wife's story, um, and her transformation. I mean, that's obviously the one is completely hit home for my heart. Um, 
I always share it. We, we do a testimonial Tuesday and that really is kind of my favorite day of the week because you, you talk about hope, you know, it's when we can bring hope back to people and not just an anecdotal hope, but you can actually see it. I, I loved one of the things that, that you said, even in your kind of your intro video, it's, you know, it's real life stories backed by science, you know, it's, and that's what I love is that we get to see the real life stories backed by the science of, of what our treatments actually do. And, you know, I still remember there was this, this lady uh, that came in, she was in her late sixties when we sat down with her and her husband, you know, in the consult room, she was literally kneeling over her knee crying because she was hurting so bad. And her, her doctor told her, the only hope that you have is surgery. And she's like, I don't want surgery. She goes, but I have nothing else. I've tried cortisone shots. I've, I've tried pain medications. Nothing is helping me. And her husband is literally sitting there just nodding his head saying, we, we don't know what else to do. And, and so, uh, you know, helping her to understand that when we can utilize these modalities, combination of things like PRP and these growth factors, when we can inject those and they're gonna actually start to decrease the inflammation and allow change to happen within that space um, and really begin to rebuild and restructure that damage, um, it, it can be transformational. But then there's, there's, there has to be the trust and the hope. And, and it was really great that you know, she did, she trusted us and within a matter of four weeks, she came walking into our office without her cane and she was doing a little, a little jig as she was walking forward <laughs> and actually crouched down. I don't always advise this because I'm like, slow down, hold up. But she literally kneeled down and got back up and like was patting her knee like, look at this. And just the smile on her face, the energy that she had, all she wanted to do was be able to go up down the stairs in her own house to go on a walk with her husband, you know, to sleep a night without waking up in pain. And to be able to offer that to people I couldn't ask to do anything more. That that's what, what I want to do for the rest of my life. And, um, and so that's another transformational story that I, I share with everybody. Yeah. Those type of things. I mean, that's really what it's all about. Those, those just hit home. I mean, we, obviously we have to make a living and, and various things, but it's those, those stories that are just so rewarding as a, as a practitioner and um, appreciate you sharing um, that uh, that story with us. And I'm sure you got uh, a ton of other success stories that uh, you, you can share. Join Dr. J next time in episode two with Dr. Adam Boonder.